This day you shall know that the Lord will come and save us, and in the morning you shall see his glory. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Today happens to be not only the fourth and the last Sunday of Advent, but also the vigil of Christmas, Christmas Eve. The birthday of our Lord, Jesus Christ, is called Christmas, because on that day the Church celebrates three Masses, specially commemorating the birth of Christ, one Mass at midnight, one Mass at dawn, and one in the full light and brilliance of day. The three Masses are a threefold act of thanksgiving to the three persons of the Blessed Trinity who participated in the great act of our redemption. It also indicates the threefold birth of Christ, that is, his birth from all eternity, his birth in Bethlehem, and his birth when we receive him in our hearts. And he comes into our hearts every time we recover the state of grace upon absolution, and more so upon every increase of sanctifying grace, notably upon reception of the Eucharist. Knowing that our Redeemer's birthday is upon us, it is tomorrow, we have no more time to prepare a good present for him, because his birthday is imminent. Since you are too late to approach the stable in Bethlehem, to deposit together with the shepherds, or even with the Magi, your gifts joined to theirs, at the very least now, over two thousand years later, prepare in these remaining hours your soul by a good examination of conscience, and life confession, just as it were a deep clean of your home, to make it a worthy, maybe barely even a habitable abode, for the Savior of your soul. Not only is this a great practice, but the greatest saints encouraged it. St. Ignatius rallied souls at the end of his 30-day retreat with a good general or life confession. A general confession is the telling of the sins of our whole life, or of a part of our life. Such a confession is advisable when we enter a new state of life, at the time of a special occasion in our spiritual life, or in a dangerous sickness. Such a confession is absolutely necessary if a previous confession was bad. A general confession is the best way to reset or deep clean our own soul, to get rid of any worries or scruples with a deep clean examination of conscience and humble confession. And it is through this effort of examining ourselves so microscopically that we can best detail clean the interior of our soul in order to worthily receive the King of Kings, Lord of Creation, tomorrow at our Christmas Holy Communion. The best qualities when preparing this life confession, any confession actually, no matter how small it be, but especially when preparing a general confession, are contrition and humility. Contrition is sorrow for sin, defined as a true grief of the soul for having offended God, with firm purpose of sinning no more. And a firm purpose means a firm will. Contrition is very important, because sins can be forgiven by a perfect contrition alone, if confession is not possible. A contrite and humble heart, O God, thou wilt not despise, says the Psalms. Humility is required in the simple and exact recitation or recounting of one's sins, in the moment or act of confessing them. There is no need to embellish or narrate a whole story. Keep your confession simple and to the point. Notice the humility of the manger and see that our Lord wants only our hearts and the gifts of our virtues, not useless material presence or pretty words of shallow emotions. Lastly, for a good confession, a purpose of amendment is also required. In fact, you can tell whether you are truly sorry if you have the intention of putting into action restraining vice or practicing why virtue from then onwards. What did Christ say about this firm purpose? Christ said, 
Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest some worse thing happen to thee. He that liveth in danger shall perish in it. Watch ye, and pray that ye enter not into temptation. And in the Our Father, lead us not into temptation. A Confession Monotonous because it merely consists of the external movements without this heartfelt purpose of amendment is sacrilegious. By mocking the sacrament of such spiritual health, it renders it null, void, and adds on top the extra sin of sacrilege. Look back to your past, to your past confessions, and examine whether you confessed well. Come to the manger of our Lord on Christmas Day and give him the best present you can, yourself, completely and unreservedly, by the twofold inclination of loving God, his commandments and virtues, and of hating anything odious to him, such as the tiniest of sins. Behold the divine insight into human nature of our Lord. When he made this self-accusation of the sinner the condition of forgiveness, it is the surest sign of contrition and the first step towards conversion. He who accuses himself of an action shows his detestation for it. He punishes himself for it by the confession which the avowal causes. However, or moreover, by this confession, he declares the deed to be his no longer and he cherishes it no more in his heart and regards it as a thing to be condemned and that he would wish to disown. Thus the confession manifests a thorough change of heart. This is the meaning of confession. It is an outward protestation that we have severed all internal connection with our sins, that we longer to suffer them no more or bear them in our hearts and minds and souls. Pope St. Leo the Great said in today's Matins, Our restoration from the consequences of Adam's fall is sheer mercy of God and nothing else. We should not have loved him unless he had first loved us and scattered the darkness of our ignorance by the light of his truth. And we know from the Apostle John how God fulfilled his promise. We know that the Son of God is come and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true and to be in him that is true even in his Son. And again, let us therefore love God because he first loved us. To sum up, a saintly confession must be humble, sincere, and entire. It is humble when we, accuse, when we accuse ourselves of our sins, with a deep sense of shame and sorrow for having offended God. It is sincere when we tell our sins honestly and truthfully, neither exaggerating nor excusing them. It is entire when we tell the number and kinds of our sins and the circumstances which change their nature. The Alleluia verse at Mass most eloquently prays, Tomorrow shall the iniquity of earth be wiped out, and the Savior of the world shall reign over us. Alleluia. Today, on the last Sunday before Christmas, St. John takes us, as it were, to the hills of Judea and bids us examine our conscience. Make ready the way of the Lord. All mankind shall see the salvation of God that is the Savior of the world. This voice of one crying in the wilderness, was heard in all centuries of the past. It will be heard until the end of time. Just as you and I hear it today, make ready the way of the Lord. Soon you will see the Savior of the world. Soon you will kneel before the crib of your God. Today, part of this most precious crib, this cradle of our Lord, is kept in Rome at the Church of Santa Maria Maggiore. And right in front of it, there is a statue of Pope Pius IX, kneeling in humble and loving adoration. Prepare yourself, repeating the secret prayer at Mass. Grant, we beseech thee, O Almighty God, that as in anticipation we come to celebrate the adorable birthday of thy Son, so we may joyously lay hold upon his everlasting rewards. 
bring low every mountain and hill and fill every valley. There is little need of explaining to you what St. John means by this. The mountains and hills are your sins, big and small, mortal and venial. The valleys are your sins of omission and your sins of neglect. Bring low every mountain and hill and fill every valley. If St. John the Baptist were here in this holy place where I stand, he would translate it for you in plain and simple language, and he would say, go to confession before Christmas, and go to Holy Communion on the Feast of All Feasts. I am sure he would also add, it is unbecoming to come with your sins before the crib of the Savior, because in the stable of Bethlehem all is holy. Holy is the infant, thrice holy. Holy are the parents, indeed most holy. Holy are the shepherds, worthy to be invited by angels. Therefore, I say in conclusion, do not come with your sins on Christmas morning. There is much, much more I could expound upon what the sacrament of penance in greater detail. But this should suffice. Prepare the way of the Lord. Do penance. Cleanse and purify your soul in the sacrament of penance. Make your Christmas confession before the great feast comes. Purify your hearts and sanctify your souls by your sincere Christmas confession and devout Christmas communion. Then the graces and the blessings, the peace and joy of Christmas, will be yours in their fullest measure. Take the analogy from the way a newborn baby is handled. Everything is sterilized and cleaned when close to or touching a brand new baby. We are told to wash our hands before holding this lovely, tiny life form. And when holding such a precious and lovable baby, every face cannot but break into smiles. In like manner, too, we should approach this crib of the infant Jesus with a clean soul and a pure heart to hold him in our arms, in the center of our heart. Join the post-communion prayer the rest of today. Grant to us, we beseech thee, O Lord, that we may begin a new life with this festival of the nativity of thine only begotten Son, who, in these mysteries, feeds us with the meat and drink of life which is eternal. Purify your hearts, sanctify your souls. In the stable of Bethlehem all is holy, be you also holy, for holiness redounds to perfect happiness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.